Originally, I only had two parts to this video series, but between uploading parts one and two of The Bible Doesn't Say That, my family and I went on a vacation to Washington, D.C. On the last full day of our trip, I took a few hours by myself to check out the Museum of the Bible. There's a lot of really cool stuff there, but one of the most fascinating was a temporary exhibit on the Slave Bible. In the early 1800s, missionaries wanted to bring the gospel to enslaved Africans in the British West India Islands. After all, everyone should get a chance to hear about salvation, right? There was a problem, though. What if the slaves picked up on the biblical notion that slavery is not a good thing? What if they read passages like Exodus 21:16 that says, He who kidnaps a man and sells him, or if he is found in his hand, shall surely be put to death. Or what about Galatians 3:28? There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. You sure don't want the slaves thinking that they're equal with their masters. What would that do to the economy? So, in 1807, a Bible was published that would keep the slaves in their proper place, and we know it today as the Slave Bible. Certain parts were left out, like everything between Genesis 45 and Exodus 19, for example. After all, we sure wouldn't want the slaves getting the idea that they, like the Israelites, could also be free. But hey, the Bible's not all bad. There were some good verses like this one, found in Ephesians 6, 5. Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and sincerity of heart, as to Christ. That's great! Slaves are supposed to serve their masters and be happy about it. We gotta leave that one in there. The Slave Bible was great because it offered enough information to save the souls of the slaves from hell, but not enough to save their bodies from slavery. If that upsets you, it should. Who are we to decide what parts of the Bible someone should read? The Museum of the Bible wanted to display this temporary exhibition to keep this thing from ever happening again. But as I looked through the display, I couldn't help but think that nothing's really changed. Not that we've cut out parts of the Bible that we don't want, for goodness sake, we're not that wicked. No, we just ignore the parts we don't like, or maybe worse, interpret them to fit in with our preconceived opinions. Probably the most common example comes from Matthew 7, 1. Judge not that you be not judged. We take it to mean that you should never tell me when I'm wrong, but that's not what it says. In fact, a few verses later, we are told how to judge other people. Along those same lines, the Bible commands us to love. So, that means we should just accept everyone the way they are, right? Well, no, because that's not what love is. In fact, the greatest example of love is Jesus giving himself to make it possible for people to change when they're wrong. Bible study can be a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of work. But don't let that scare you. Ultimately, the goal is simple whether you're a searching skeptic or a PhD. Find out what the Bible actually says, then go out and live it.